Hervé Jean-Pierre Villachez was born April 23, 1943, in Nazi-occupied Paris. His father, who was a famous surgeon, knew right away that Hervé had dwarfism and had him enrolled in several medical institutes to try and correct the endocrine disorder. Though many techniques were used on him, his height would never go past 3 foot 10 inches tall. Times were scary under Nazi control for people with disabilities. His mother was afraid to bring him out in public in fear that he would be taken away. She even had a hiding place in the attic ready in case someone came for him. After France was liberated by the U.S. and Allied forces, life was a little easier, but there was still a disdain towards people with disabilities. His brother said that one time they were all walking as a family and a grown man ran across the street screaming and kicked Hervé. Their father had to fight the man off. After this incident and all of the bullying Hervé was putting up with at school, their father started taking Hervé to work with him. He would also take him out of town when he had to work in other hospitals for a few weeks. This was not just to keep Hervé safe, but to give the rest of the family a chance to go out in public without fear. In order to pass the time, Hervé started to learn how to paint. By the time he was 16, Hervé became the youngest artist to ever have their work displayed in the Museum of Paris. In 1964, at age 21, Hervé wanted to leave France because people still treated him badly there, he said. His father was worried, but gave him money to travel someplace safe. Hervé took off for the Bohemian District of New York. There he found a camaraderie with the artists, musicians, and actors in the community. Hervé said that he learned English from watching John Wayne movies at the time. Eventually, he started going on auditions with other actors, and he landed a few minor parts. This excited Hervé and kept him going for a few years, but it wasn't paying the bills. By 1974, he was about to be homeless when he landed a role in the James Bond film, The Man with the Golden Gun. Hervé played a pretty major role in the movie as the evil henchman called Nick Knack. With that money, he was able to move to California and keep auditioning for movies, but again, he ran into a dry spell. By 1977, he was living in a car and had not gone on an audition in months. One day he showed up at his acting agency and they told him that they had been looking for him for weeks. Seems Aaron Spelling had called them and wanted Hervé to try out for a part in a TV movie he was working on. Hervé's agency called Aaron's production company back and was told that they would still allow Hervé to try out, but he had to show up the next day, which he did. As soon as the audition was over, Hervé was told that he got the part. Aaron Spelling said that Hervé was his first choice, but had he not shown up that week, they would have went with someone else. An offer was made and Hervé signed on to play Tattoo on the made-for-TV movie Fantasy Island. Once the movie aired, it received such great reviews that a second TV movie was made. It did even better than the first, and ABC requested that Fantasy Island become a weekly show. Aaron Spelling studied all the feedback from the viewers of the two TV movies and noticed that the character Tattoo, played by Hervé, was almost as popular as the host Mr. Rourke, played by Ricardo Montalban. With this in mind, a new offer was made to Hervé. He would be paid $25,000 an episode to sign on for the weekly series, which he gladly accepted. Fantasy Island hit the airwaves and became a staple of people's weekly TV viewing habits. Although it never hit number one in the ratings, it was consistently high up there. Hervé was now officially a star. Everywhere he would go, people would yell, Tattoo! Or they would recite his catchphrase. The plan! The plan! Life became one big party for Hervé. Enjoying his stardom, Hervé went from just being invited to the parties to throwing some of the biggest Hollywood parties of the era. His antics constantly had him in the papers not just for what woman he was seen with that week, but more for his drinking and wild behavior. Hervé was out of control. During the sixth season of Fantasy Island, Hervé's unset behavior led to a lot of conflict. Ultimatums were given to Hervé, and instead of getting himself under control, he left the show and his contract. Having close to a $4 million net worth at the time, Hervé didn't really care to try and find more work. Instead, he ramped up the partying, reaching a point of almost self-destructive behavior. After getting married to his wife Camille, people close to him thought that he would slow down. Unfortunately, he did not, and the marriage lasted less than a year. Eventually, Hervé started to try and find more acting work, but all he could get were spots on commercials, where his lines were just a wordplay of his famous Fantasy Island catchphrases. Hauntingly delicious minis for Halloween. They're alive! 
Minis are a faction the size of our regular donor. By the late 1980s, having stopped the wild partying, Hervé settled down with his common-law wife, Kathy Self. Together they lived a happy, loving lifestyle. He even went on TV a few times for interviews and talked about being happy and thanking his fans for being supportive. It was not much longer before Hervé became very sick. The dwarfism that he suffered from allowed his internal organs to grow to normal sizes, which were causing him severe pain and making it harder for him to breathe. Kathy and his friends said that he would have to kneel down sometimes to take deep breaths, and he was spending more and more time laying down in positions that didn't hurt him so bad. On September 4th, 1993, Kathy was awakened by two gunshots. She jumped out of bed and ran around the house looking for Hervé, only to find him outside the back door. Hervé had taken his own life. In front of him was a tape recorder still recording, along with a suicide note. The police played the recording and it started with Hervé saying, Kathy, I can't take living like this anymore. I've always been a proud man and always wanted to make you proud of me. You know you make me feel like a giant and that's how I want you to remember me. I am now going to do something that I have to do. I want everything to go to you, Kathy, my love. Please tell all my fans that I love them dearly. Then it ends with two gunshots. The police concluded that the first shot was a test shot into the ground next to him. The second killed him. He was 50 years old. If you liked this video, click on one of the others. The Sergeant Schultz video is very interesting. Don't be scared to subscribe to Cool Classics. We're just having fun, reminiscing, and learning some freaky facts.